American Conference Tournament, both the men's and women's quarterfinals underway early this week. Women take center stage Wednesday. Tomorrow, the men's quarterfinals will be Thursday, semifinals Friday for both, and the championship games on Saturday. Let's welcome in Dr. John Steinbrecher. He is the commissioner of the Mid-American Conference. Um, Dr. Steinbrecher, I, I know the conference is excited about this, and they're excited because the tournament continues to be at Rocket Mortgage Field house downtown Cleveland just a great facility uh, we think it's the best facility in the country quite frankly uh, but yeah we are excited and, and you know we're kind of in the middle of a streak of a whole bunch of championships just came off a weekend where we had wrestling and men's swimming the weekend before we had women's swimming we've got women's gymnastics coming up uh, it's a great time of year in our office and our campuses in fact across all of, of college sports and yet so much of the attention is focused in on um, uh, March Madness, uh, men's and women's basketball, and, and rightly so. Uh, it's, it's, March is a phenomenal month, and, and we're looking forward to it. How excited um, are the, the student athletes to be in that venue? And, and again, you can get tickets. Um, you check out getmaction.com. That'll direct you to the place where you can get tickets. Uh, women's semifinals and finals. Uh, coming up Friday, Saturday, quarterfinals uh, for the women Wednesday, quarterfinals for the men on Thursday. But how excited are the student athletes to be in that NBA venue at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse? I think we all recognize we play in a special place. We're one of the few that play in an NBA arena. We play in an NBA arena with a franchise and an ownership group and a community that has continued to reinvest in the facility. So we're, what, a year a year past where they completed a pretty significant, about a $250 million renovation of the building. So it's essentially a new building and it's really second to none. And so the uh, experience we can provide for the participants to student athletes is phenomenal. What they did over the summer and fall in, in updating and upgrading the, the locker rooms and those kind of behind the scenes area, are, uh, it was really phenomenal. And then what we what goes on in the bowl itself, the, the, the areas for the fans to be, whether it's wandering the concourses and visiting the various neighborhoods or just being in that in the in the, in the arena seating area where the sight lines are so great, uh, all the amenities that go with it, we can provide um, a top of the line experience for all involved. You mentioned uh, one of the top facilities in the country. Along those lines, um, Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse and the Mid-American Conference will be hosting the Women's Final Four. Uh, take us through that process and, and how excited you are to be partnering with Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse and the NCAA to, to put on national championship semifinals and finals here in Cleveland. And I'll actually add another partner, and that's the Greater Cleveland Sports Commission, uh, and the three of us have really developed over the past decade plus a tremendous relationship and a pretty good success record of hosting NCAA championship events. Clearly, this is one of the pinnacle events uh, in all of college sports. It's one of the premier uh, women's basketball events in the world. Uh, I'd go back to really 2017 and 2018. I think we, we secured the bid in 2018. 2017 was the prep year getting everything in place, uh, we, we were one of, I don't know how many ultimately put in beds. There was a finalist group of eight. Eight of us went down to Tampa, made presentations, and we were uh, very pleased to be one of four uh, that secured uh, one of the championships. And we've been waiting since. And so working very hard with the Greater Cleveland Sports Commission in the arena to do the types of things, the prep work, uh, a lot of creativity on the, the uh, events around it. It's not just three basketball games over a couple of days. It's a week of, of events, uh, many of them public facing, so that people, many, many, many people, even if you don't have tickets to the games, you can come and enjoy the events down in public square or at the convention center or throughout the community. There's a host of legacy events we're doing. There's a reading program going on right now that is absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's fun to watch it come to fruition because it's been a six year march towards this. 
and now the we're kind of in the the final days of getting ready for it. Yeah, and, and women's basketball, women's college basketball, is really trending in terms of um, visibility and and TV ratings and all those good things. Um, it's reaching all time highs as well. You know, it really is, and and rightly so. It's always been a great sport, and people are are discovering it. And part of what's helping is it's a deeper, broader sport. There's more really good teams. It's not just one or two teams. There's a host of really good teams. I could teach, speak even to our league, and our league has had pretty good success in this sport. We're not too many years off where we had two Sweet 16 teams in a single year. Well, we've got two top 75 teams right now in Toledo and Ball State as we head into our basketball tournament. You know, you're seeing these personalities emerge, whether it's Kate, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, whomever, just a, a bunch of things. And then, obviously, you've always had colorful coaches but now when you match the players with the coaches, the depth of the field, uh, I think it makes it uh, something that's really capturing the attention of the sports viewing public. All right, before I let you go, some big news uh, from the Mid-American Conference, um, a conference that has been so stable uh, relative to the turmoil that's going on across college athletics. You're adding, um, you've added a member school, uh, the University of Massachusetts. Uh, they were involved in the periphery on some sports as well, but a full-time member. Uh, how excited are you about that? What went into deciding to add UMass? We were very pleased, and this was one of those situations where um, when you get approached, you, you step back and, and contemplate it. And at the end of the day, the analysis was this was too good an opportunity to, to not move forward we, on a host of things. You, you mentioned we've been a very stable conference, and it's because of a number of things. Um, great commonality or homogeneity and what we look like as institutions in general, how we operate our athletics programs, depth and breadth of programs, all those types of things. Here's another national public research institution. And in this case, it's one of the top 35, top 50 public universities in the country. It's a flagship institution. It's in a contiguous state to our conference. Um, so a lot of really great things there. And we think they will in fact strengthen us they have a tremendous men's basketball history. I think people probably jump to that right away. And we look forward to getting them integrated into our, our conference play uh, right off the bat. And then in football, they're a program that needs to grow. But they didn't have a chance to grow and develop that program until they got into a conference. From when they were with us as an affiliate member in football to where they are today uh, is night and day in terms of their investment in the program terms of what they've done with their coaching staff, their support facilities, those types of things. They're set up for success. Uh, I, will, I will be surprised if in a number of sports they don't come in and push to be um, at or near the top of the field uh, across the board. So I guess the, the next logical question is, are there potential others to add to? Because I think you're at 13 now, so I, obviously you probably want to be at an even number, and I'm just guessing that um you know what uh let me i have my college football jersey here <laughs> let me show it to you right right there all right um, <laughs> high school and college my number was 13 um i'm in no way uncomfortable with that number now we'll do the same things we have always done and i guess it's pretty clear since this is the first school we brought in since i think 98 we don't just open up the door to anyone. Um, we'll pay attention to what's going on around us. If there's opportunities, we will contemplate and evaluate. And if, if there's opportunities that make us stronger, we'll take advantage of them. But we're not going to add just to have an even number. 